Hello again, fellow Mystery Files. Today I'm finishing up my ranking of every Miss Silver novel written by Patricia Wentworth with the top 10 in the series. And these are, for the most part, pretty good books. And when I say pretty good, I mean, relatively speaking for Miss Silver, these novels are just pretty basic at best. Had another author written these books, I think they would be in the middle of their rankings at most, if not below average, which I, I think is probably more likely. These top 10 are competent, but they don't do anything special. I was never wowed by them or even really like sucked into the action for the most part. I think they do what they do well, but nothing extraordinary of note, to be honest. But as always, there may be spoilers ahead, but I will try to keep them to a minimum. And before I begin, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. Dream at number 10 is one of four country village mysteries in this top 10, and that is The Water Splash. And this is a traditional country village murder where we have multiple victims who are found dead in the local water splash. And they may or may not have been murdered, but you know, since this is a mystery novel, they, they have been murdered. And what I like about this one is how Patricia Wentworth does a very good job of incriminating everyone. I actually could believe that anyone could have done it, which is rarely the case for these Miss Silver novels. Now, I did peg the culprit early on, mainly because it's simply the kind of character she typically uses as her killers, but there was enough obfuscation for me to have some doubts. There is an interesting plot point where the killer blackmails other characters over the murder, which is something I don't recall seeing offhand before, but unfortunately it didn't really go where I was hoping it would. The Water Splash is a very competent mystery novel, but like so many in this top 10, it, it doesn't really stand out so much, so it comes in at number 10. At number 9 is a novel that started off great and petered out off considerably toward the back half, and that is The Listening Eye. And here we have a deaf woman named Paulina who reads lips and basically overhears a murder plot that comes to fruition when a man named Arthur Hughes is murdered during a robbery and ambush. There's a lot of questions over whether Arthur was the intended victim or not, and then Paulina herself is murdered when she's pushed in front of a car. I think this is the best opening to a Miss Silver novel. I was really hooked in from the beginning here. Unfortunately, it really takes a turn for the worse in the second half. The murderer becomes very apparent very quickly, and it doesn't really play out in an interesting way either. There's a lot of nonsensical repetition and overdramatic arguments. I think the character of Moira is just awful. I mean, she acts like a six-year-old when she's in her 20s. You have important characters coming out of nowhere very late in the book. But I did think the opening was very strong and strong enough to boost the listening eye into the top 10 here at number 9. At number 8 is the novel that made me continue reading this series because I told myself if this novel wasn't any good, I would just stop reading and move on to something else. But it was good, and that is The Chinese Shawl. And this is the first Miss Silver novel chronologically that focuses more on the actual mystery at hand. Not that it doesn't have all these other like romantic subplot nonsense, but the focus is primarily on the murder. It's also the first Miss, where Miss Silver plays a major role. She's in this one from much earlier than she had been previously. It's a country house mystery with a lot of suspects and a decent amount of suspense. The murderer is not clear until the reveal, and I think there are a number of interesting clues that can be interpreted a number of different ways. But there are some issues here as well. I, I think there are too many characters. It was very difficult to keep track of them, and it seemed to major suspects barely got any page time, while other really minor characters got actually quite a lot of page time. Characters kept bouncing in and out of the novel that I forget I had already met them. I also didn't think the solution came together well enough. It made sense, but I, I do think Miss Silver makes some big leaps in logic to get there and proving her case, but it was a strong entry into the series nonetheless, so the Chinese shawl comes in here at number 8. At number seven, and I will say this is my personal favorite Miss Silver novel, but I recognize it is not the best quality novel, and that is Miss Silver Deals with Death, also called Miss Silver Intervenes. And I love the character work in this book, it's its strongest asset. First off, this is the first appearance of both Frank Abbott and Inspector Lamb, who are both delightful in this book and in almost all of their appearances together. This book really sets them up as a somewhat comedic duo and really the main investigators in the books they appear in. 
Second, I love what Patricia Wentworth does with her one-time characters here. This book is set in London in the middle of World War II, and Wentworth really makes an effort to get the, for the reader to get to know her characters in these situations. We learn so much about each of the people who live in this apartment complex in London and how the war affects their lives. I think Miss Silver deals with that has the best character work in a Miss Silver novel. I love this character of Miss Garside, who is an elderly spinster who is going broke and has to sell all of her nice furniture and cancel her housekeeper. She turns to stealing, and for me, this really demonstrated the dire situation of Londoners during World War II. There are so many little scenes depicting this, such as Miss Silver worrying about being able to purchase wool and yarn for her knitting, and Miss Garside winds up being the secondary murder victim here. The reason why I can't put this one any higher is because I think the murder plot is just so poorly executed. It's not a total disaster, but it has significant issues. I mean, the murderer is someone who's barely in the book, and from probably the least talked about apartment in the novel, it does play fair because we are provided the necessary information to solve it, but it like barely reaches the minimum requirements for fairness. I also think the writing here is just simply not up to snuff. I mean, there are a lot of issues regarding basic story construction and the writing skills here. And while this is my personal favorite, it clearly is not the best in quality. And I try to keep my rankings balanced between quality and my personal like of the book. And I just couldn't justify putting Miss Silver Deals with Death any higher than here at number seven. At number six is the highest novel featuring someone with amnesia, which really seemed to be a common trope in many of these books, and that is The Case of William Smith. And again, I really enjoy this book. It, we do have the titular William Smith trying to put his life back together after he takes a job in a toy shop. There are multiple attempts on his life and on his boss's life, mainly by someone constantly shoving them in front of moving vehicles. There is a love story here, but it's on the back burner to let the mystery come forth. There is a question of who the intended victim is, William Smith, his boss, or possibly even someone else. I found this one to be a very compelling mystery. There were many different angles for it. I have to say, I wasn't thrilled with the depiction of a mentally ill woman who is largely scapegoated and considered dangerous, even though she's very clearly not. And the murder plot hinges on an inheritance scheme, which once again I enjoyed. I think the story here was good, but I do have some more minor issues with it. The murderer is pretty clearly indicated from early on, and it's not either a roguish young man or a middle-aged spinster, but a young female sex Secretary, which is probably like the next most common character Patricia Wentworth uses. And there is a murder in this book, but it's extremely tangential to the plot. I and mean, there's a casual mention of an old trustee who may have recognized William who is murdered. And it's a very minor plot point that's not even really given much attention. And at the end, it's just sort of like mentioned, oh yeah, he was murdered. But I do think the plot was strong enough and interesting enough to deserve a high ranking here at number six. At number five is another one that I moved a little bit before I locked in my list, and that is Death at the Deep End, also called the Scooby-Doo-ish title of Anna, Where Are You? And this one started off very strong. We have a young woman named Thomasina who is searching for her friend Anna who disappeared. Thomasina travels a good bit to different places where Anna worked as a servant, but she doesn't really like discover anything until she hires Miss Silver. And this is a fun one where Miss Silver is hired undercover and she goes as a couple's uh, nanny to their children. And Anna used to work at this place before she disappeared. There's also a casual side plot involving local bank robberies. And I'd say I enjoyed this book a lot. And there are a number of fun moments, and the mystery was very good. I liked the characters. They felt a little different than normal, a little more real, if you ask me. I was disappointed in the ending with the way it was executed. Anna turns out to have gone into hiding to lure Thomasina to her, to essentially kill her as revenge for being mean to her in school, even though Thomasina is Anna's only friend, didn't really quite connect for me. And Anna is also part of this bank robbery gang as a getaway driver, which wasn't very well hidden. Now, I don't mind the solution, it just didn't unfold in an interesting way, and it ends in a murder that I'm not really sure why it happened. I didn't think it was necessary, and it's not really explained either, but I found the overall concept of this book to be enough to raise it to here at number five. At number four, and these next two are both set during World War II, and if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know how much I love this time period in mystery novels, 
And at number four, I have The Key. And I did go back and forth between this book and the one I placed at number three. I think they both make excellent use of the time period, have strong characters, and a good murder plot. In The Key, a refugee scientist is murdered in the village church while playing the organ, and everyone is a suspect, of course, and the suspicion never really lands on one specific person. This one does not have an obvious murderer, and so much of the focus is on whether anyone in the village is either a German spy or a turncoat. There are some personal motives as well mixed in, but generally the police and Miss Silver are at a complete loss. I found myself invested in all of the characters, even though I don't think they popped as much as they did in, say, like, Miss Silver deals with death. I love this story about this tragic downfall of this refugee who was on the cusp of a major scientific breakthrough. For me, the reason why I have this one at number four is that I don't think the mystery is truly solvable. It does play fair, but there really aren't that many clues to get the reader to the solution. The murderer is also someone who barely makes an appearance, but does, again, not quite break the rules, as he or she was introduced early enough, but then disappeared midway through. Nonetheless, the story was very enjoyable and otherwise well executed, so the key comes in here at number four. At number three is the last remaining World War II novel and the earliest one left on the board, and that is The Clock Strikes Twelve. And this one involves the theft of some blueprints, and it's very vague about what these blueprints are of, but they're clear for some kind of weapon or tank during the war. The blueprints are stolen, and then later Mr. Paradine, who owns the company the blueprints belong to, is murdered. And I find the plot to be one of the best murder plots in the series. The stolen blueprints have nothing to do with the murder, yet it is not a red herring or a blind. And there's a neat trick where we learn the identity of the thief about halfway through or so the book. And what the reader will assume here is that, oh, this person isn't the murderer. But this is a twisted around to be false. The, mur the thief is the murderer, but the two plots were completely unrelated. I thought this was a nice twist that I don't believe I had seen before, at least off the top of my head. Now, I don't think it's some mind-blowing twist, but it was decent enough. I also like the atmosphere in this one where it's set around Christmas and New Year's. I do have some issues, though. I think Miss Silver doesn't really solve the case here. She just once again kind of stumbles across the correct answer. And we have another very overdramatic ending. I think the story was, quite frankly, much better before Miss Silver entered the scene. The action is broken up because we have several passages of Miss Silver doing whatever she's doing that has nothing to do with the murder plot, which I thought was quite enjoyable. But overall, I found The Clock Strike 12 a competent and very good mystery novel, so it comes in here at number three. At number two is a very late novel, and that is Poison in the Pen. And this one is obviously a Poison Pen letter novel, and I very much enjoy this type of plot. To me, this is like a less good version of Agatha Christie's The Moving Finger, although the plot is actually quite different. I found Poison the Pen to be a very good novel by Miss Silver standards, at least. Frank Abbott asked Miss Silver to investigate some mysterious anonymous letters that have been circulating in a small country village. There are three murders in this one, and I found Miss Silver to be a compelling force in this book. Really one of the only few times I think she is the main investigator in practice. She traces the movements of everyone and all the letters. I think she's actually quite clever. There are actually clues in this one, which is something many of these novels lack, even some of these more uh, higher rank novels. I think more than any other Miss Silver novel, I was most invested in the plot in this one. I think the solution is fine. I was able to suss out the killer from pretty early on, and it's one of Patricia Wentworth's typical killers, but I thought the reveal and the journey there were full of twists, and to be honest, I don't think most readers would have figured this out. I just had so much fun reading this book, and it's constructed very well, but it does fall short of the top spot and lands here at number two. And at number one is a novel that I have at the top for a very specific reason, and that is Miss Silver Comes to Stay. And like I've been saying, I think this book is just average had it been included amongst another author's works. If I were to rank all of the books I placed at the top of these lists, Miss Silver Comes to Stay would be by far at the bottom of the ranking. The plot here is a pretty typical one for Patricia Wentworth, and it features Randall March, her former pupil, who I think is just far less interesting than Frank Abbott, but Randall does find love in this book, which is probably the one time I was actually invested in the romantic subplot in these books. 
the mystery involves a little convoluted plot point, but the gist is that a man named James Lassiter comes back to town of Melling with some grudges against various people and is murdered. And the plot is very good. It's very well fleshed out, and this is a true puzzle mystery. I really couldn't say that about almost all of the other Miss Silver novels. And the reason why I have this one at number one is because of a very clever clue in this book. And I talked about this clue in a previous video, but James calls Catherine, who, and it's a little more nuanced than I'm going to explain here, but basically Catherine stole a bunch of furniture from James's mother, and he wants it back. And James calls Catherine and says something like, I've been settling grudges, I just called the lawyer, and now I'm calling you. And this is interpreted as James calling the lawyer to go after Catherine, but in reality, he called the lawyer to sell a grudge with him. And I found this to be an impressive clue, but and by far the most impressive trick in a Patricia Wentworth novel. So that alone, for me, put Miss Silver Comes to Stay in the top spot here at number one. And that's it for this week's video. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure how often I'm going to reference Patricia Wentworth or Miss Silver in future novels. They just didn't stick in my head for the most part, and I just think they have far less merit to them than like works by like Dorothy L. Sayers or Niall Marsh or Agatha Christie or someone like that. But who knows, there may be a time for it. Next week, I have a video idea suggested to me by a viewer who recommended I list the top clues in mystery novels, and I've decided to split this up a bit. My next video, I will rank the top clues used by Agatha Christie. And like I've said in the past, I can just do more things with Agatha Christie novels because I know them the best, and she is the most popular author, so more viewers can understand the videos. And I may do this for other authors in the future, but next week, it's Agatha Christie. So until next time, Mystery Files.